Hey girl, hey. Um, as you can see in the title, it is story time. Um, this will be my very first story time. So um, make sure you let me know in the comment box whether or not you like this story, whether or not you like how I tell stories. Um, sometimes my memory can be a little jack and I don't want to put any false information into the story. So um, yeah you may see me stumble a little bit because I'm just trying to remember everything how it actually happened um, this story time is going to be in um, accordance with domestic violence uh, I was once married to someone before we got married did not show these signs and or maybe they did and I just wasn't paying attention but it was like the day after we got married, whole another person. I don't know who that was the next day. But okay, so basically in 2002, I came home from Texas and I wasn't really looking to get into dating, but um, I was at a club and I met him and we exchanged numbers and started talking from there. Um, oh, and also I'm recording from my phone, so if it's moving and shaking, I apologize. But I don't have a stand in my car. Um, I know this is all off subject, but basically I got a little time to burn, so might as well use it productively. So anyway, back to the story. Um, we started dating, we dated, we dated, we dated. Now, this is where it gets a bit foggy, and I'm not sure why, because it's a whole year difference, but I can't remember if we got married June of 2003 or June 2004. Yeah, I really can't remember, but whatever the case may be, uh, we got married, but my, okay, so like I was saying, before we got married, woo, 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 woo like, wooed me from it uh, every day every night like <laughs> was like Mr. Right but after we got married I he decided to let his true color shine through I guess he felt like he finally got me where he wanted me so um let's see how did things start happening I was working at Church's Chicken, and he was an electrician. Um, yeah, two different worlds. How about that? Um, think, 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 think. <clears throat> While working at, well, I've, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. I started working at Church's Chicken after we got married and that was only because I just wanted a little extra change in my pocket he took care of all the bills he took care of the groceries and whatnot I just wanted a little extra change so I started working at churches and what I would notice is that sometimes I would see him drive by at night I guess he's checking to see if I'm at work um, and I felt like that you know has something to do with trust like dude I'm going to work I ain't want to be with nobody but when I look back on it now I do realize he wasn't just checking to see if I was at work just to see if I was at work he was checking to see if I was at work so he could do you know go out and do what the hell he wanted to do um I was doing laundry one time and found phone numbers in his pocket and one said margarita now, my sister has worked at uh, a club before for some years, and so I knew a couple of the people that worked there as well, um, and then I worked for, there for like three days, but <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, but Margarita, like that name is familiar, like I know Margarita, 
why do you have Margarita's phone number in your pocket? That means you're still, that means you're going to this club. You're still going to this club that you should not be going to. You're married. So, anywho, um, moving on from there, we had gotten into arguments. He would resort to, um, hitting me and doing different things and you know the first time he did it i should have fucking run like you know lightning like i should have ran i should have got out of there but me with that whole through thick and thin for better for worse you know we took vows and i was trying to hold true to my vows i was still working at churches um there was this one time i got off early and he didn't know. And when I got home, okay, so we have, where we lived, we have a screen door and then the front door. And that is just getting into the front porch. And then there's another door. Well, the screen door is never locked until everyone is in, in the house because there's no key to it or anything like that. You gotta lock it from the inside. Well, I couldn't get into the screen door. And I said, okay, well, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he locked it just because, because it wasn't the greatest neighborhood. It wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the greatest. But so I said, okay, well, maybe he just locked the door. Let me go to the window to um, see, you know, to, to wake him up, to knock on the window. Well, when I got to the bedroom window, what did I see? <laughs> I saw a naked woman standing in my room. He was fully dressed, but she was naked. And so I immediately, <laughs> oh, thinking back on it. So I immediately run to the, I knock on the window really hard. And then I run to the front door and he comes out the front door, closing the door behind him and pushing me a, away from the door back to the side of the house. And and doing everything that he can to not let me get into the house. Pushing me, tripping me up, all kinds of shit. But I finally get past him and I get in the house. And the woman that was in there is trying to get out the back door, only you can't because it's a deadbolt. You have to have a key to get out. She, she didn't know that. But, uh, and this is a little petty part. A petty part? Uh, it's a pet it's petty for me to even bring it up but it's petty for her to even do it like why are you trying to steal my straightening comb you know the old ones that you used to put on the stove like why are you trying to steal that why are you running out the back door with my straightening comb <laughs> anywho so but when i got to her i snapped back into my right mind and realized that it's not her that i need to be after it's him she don't know so or maybe she do know i don't know but i don't believe she knew because as as i look back on it and things were playing out i realized she was a rock star and what i mean by a rock star is that she was a crackhead and a prostitute now, although I didn't know that immediately, I did decide to not have sex with him anymore because I don't know who all you've been dealing with at this point. And I love my life a little more than that. You know, even though we were using condoms anyway, like I still love my life more than that. I can't have sex with you. That's, and I'm so pissed off at you. For one, you brought this bitch into our home why did you think that that was okay why did you think it was okay to cheat like and then I don't I didn't understand why he was cheating is it just you is it a part of you that is a part of men is it in your genes like I don't understand because I could have sworn I was doing all. And when I say all, I mean all my wifely duties. But, anywho, that's neither here nor there at this point. 
So, like I said, I decided to stop having sex with him. I also stopped working at Church's Chicken and got a job at a debt consolidation company, which was on the opposite side of town. Now, yes, I'm able to get to work, but I didn't have a cell phone at the time. Now, this is 2004. 2004, yeah. I didn't have a cell phone at the time, so... Um, I'm working way on the other side and I'm starting to make more money. So I was like, okay, well, let me get me a cell phone as for one, an emergency, just in case an emergency comes up and two, so he would be able to reach me if he needed to. Um, so the day I got the cell phone, I went into the mall, I bought me a little Nokia you know, and when I got home, I put my phone number into his phone. And I don't know what happened. My thing that I was going to do was call him and surprise him. Hey, baby, I got a phone, yada, yada, yada. You know, trying to get over all the foolishness that has been happening and, and, and whatever the case may be. So he saw the phone. Yeah, he saw the phone and he smashed my phone. And then he presented it to me and asked me, what is this? Nigga, I just spent all, well, at that time, <laughs> it wasn't really a lot of money, but I just spent all this money on this phone and you gonna go fucking smash it? Why? I bought this phone. But see, to him, because I'm not having sex with him, he thinks that another dude has bought the phone. If I'm not having sex with him, I got to be having sex with somebody. No, I'm not you. I am me. And I hold true to my vows still. And, like, all this that I've gone through with you in this two-year span, like, come on, dude. For real? So, um, we got into a fight that day. The day that he smashed my phone, we got into a fight. This was the worst fight ever. Now, mind you, we, I wouldn't say we had gotten into fights before. He has hit me and did things to me before, but I never fought back. But this day, I was tired. And that day, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So, um... We're, we're arguing back and forth. And it's something that he said that made me say, you're not even my husband anymore. And saying that made him click. Like, I feel like he just blacked out. And he swung. And he hit me across my face with his fist. Like, he punched the shit out of me. But in the same instance of him punching me, because I felt like this is what it was going to come down to. I knew he was going to hit me. So I'm, I'm peeping around. I'm checking out the scene. Like I kind of, it's like, you know, what's in your living room. So as soon as he swung at me to hit me, I reached down to the coffee table and picked up a vase. It is a single rose vase. So it's got the skinny handle and then it loops around at the bottom. Well, I picked that up. As soon as he hit me, I hit him back. And it shocked the shit out of him. So that enraged him even more that I decided to fight back. And he somehow gets behind me and he's choking me. Oh. <laughs> he's choking me and... Okay, I thought I would, no, I thought I could tell this story without crying, but, oh, flashback, flashback. He's choking me and trying to, like, he's choking me with one hand, trying to get the vase with the other hand, but I will not let him get this vase. You are not about to hit me the way that I just hit you, or even worse with this vase. So I'm holding on to the vase 
and holding it real tight to my chest so he can't get to it. I'm holding it with both hands. So he starts choking me with both hands. And we end up hovering over the sofa while he's choking me. Now, mind you, the sofa is right by, is right in front of the living room window. So as we are, as we're still t tussling, um, well, I'm sorry, as he's choking me and I'm laying over the sofa, um, he's, it's like, I got to fight for my life. I got to fight for my life. Kia, what are you going to do? So I pull the vase out again real quick and reach back and I hit him and then I put it right back under me. And then he, uh, he starts bleeding everywhere. But he starts choking me even harder. And I start trying to scream for help. And he starts choking me and pushing in on my throat even harder. So I'm thinking to myself, what can I do? I can't, I can't go like this. I, I can't, I have three children. What am I going to do? So I start begging and pleading and apologizing and telling him I won't hit him anymore. And tell him that I love him. And telling him that he is my husband and we can work this out. And I'm begging. And I'm begging, I'm begging. And he finally stops choking me. And he gets off of me to go into the bathroom to clean up so that we can talk. As soon as he gets in the bathroom, I ran out. <laughs> pew, pew. Nigga was out that front door. I was out the front door. And ran to my neighbor's house and called the police. And because he knew I was calling the police, he starts tearing up stuff in the house. I will insert pictures. So, he breaks up my trophies that I got from high school. How fucking petty is that? He begins to rip the TV from the TV stand so I won't have it. How petty is that? He just starts doing different things, tearing up the house. When the police get there, uh, he comes out, they arrest him. They take pictures of me. They take pictures of the house. He's pulled braids out of my head like scalped me <laughs> pulling braids out of my head all kinds of shit like October 2nd of 2004 would have been the last day of my life if I had not thought critically so we go to court um, that day at court no one no one held on to held on to those charges except me. It was a domestic violence court and there was quite a few cases that day. And all the women before me dropped the charges. You tried to take my life. You're not gonna get off that easy. So I held on to my charges. I pushed forward with it. And the judge ended up um, giving me a, a lifetime restraining order. I didn't even know those existed. But yeah, he gave me a lifetime restraining order. And the only thing about it that I disagreed with was that my ex-husband only got six months. And then he only did five with time served and good behavior. Bullshit. But whatever the case may be, I still have that restraining order in my possession. And, you know, I've moved on with my life. But I shared this story with you all because I want you all to know that it's help out there. It is help out there. And you can get away. Um, after after everything went down with court and whatnot, um, there was this agency that got in contact with me um, for women who have been in domestic violence situations. And... 
they were going to pay for me to move. They were going to pay for me to move wherever I wanted to move to. And I was going to move out to Texas because my aunt stays out that way. And I had already, you know, been out there before. But then I had to think about it. Kia, you moved from Texas because nothing was going on for you. So why would you move back? So I decided not to move anywhere and just to move forward with my life and not let anyone scare me away from my hometown. So um, I thank God that everything worked out for the best. But ladies, men, children, like everyone, anyone who is in a domestic violence situation, know that there is help. And also, if you have a family member in a domestic violence situation, reach out to help them you know you'll see the signs okay so that was my story time for today um be sure to subscribe <laughs> and thumb up this video um i know there are some people out there that has it worse that had it worse than me or even has it worse than i did but um domestic violence is domestic violence and is wrong either way it goes so, um, I, I don't take this story lightly. I don't. I don't take abuse lightly at all. And, um, yeah, I'm at a loss for words now. So, uh, until next time, love yous. Have faith, you'll make it. Don't be afraid to fly. Embrace your struggle Ignite one steep Just searching for beautiful I'm just searching for beautiful